The progression of Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a question that's been burning brighter as the calendar marks over a year since the first boots hit Ukrainian soil. The media's drumbeat tells a story of Ukraine's dogged resistance, and a tip of the hat goes to the US and the NATO team for backing them up. It paints a picture of Russia not just squaring off against one opponent, but taking on a coalition. Despite having the odds stacked against them, Russia's been flexing its military muscles, showing off a series of victories on the battlefield. We're talking about the obliteration of some top-notch gear sent Ukraine's way. Bradley fighting vehicles, S-300 missile systems, and main battle tanks like the Leopard 2, not to mention heaps of intercepted ammo. For the folks in Moscow, these wins are more than a feather in the cap. They're stoking the fires of speculation that the Russian bear might just be closing in on a total triumph. Now, that sets the stage for a host of questions, each a headline in its own right. Could the tides truly be turning in favor of a Russian win? What might the future hold for Ukrainian lands? How would a Russian triumph reshape the global political landscape? And what's next on Russia's agenda post, a successful conquest of Ukraine? To fully grasp the intricacies of Russia's invasion and the potential outcome, one must first dissect Ukraine's internal dynamics. It's a misconception to believe that every Ukrainian citizen stands unwaveringly behind their president Volodymyr Zelensky in these tumultuous times. In reality, Zelensky and his administration are under fire for allegations of misusing military aid, generously provided by the US and its allies. Pulitzer-winning journalist Seymour Hersh has reported eyebrow-raising numbers regarding the purported corruption under Zelensky's watch, alleging a staggering sum of around $413 million. This revelation stings, particularly considering the hefty price the Ukrainian nation has paid. Over 4,400 homes and 12 airports lie in ruins, with damages soaring up to an alarming $63.28 billion. And Zelensky isn't the sole figure in the spotlight. Several top-tier Ukrainian officials, including the defense minister, Oleksiy Reskinov, are facing scrutiny. Reskinov allegedly splurged a whopping $7.63 million on a mansion for his daughter's wedding a sum that sharply contrasts with his officially declared assets of $1.09 million. Such revelations hint at officials potentially capitalizing on the crisis for personal enrichment. The soldiers fighting tooth and nail on the front are particularly incensed. They're not just decrying the alleged financial misconduct, but are also disgruntled by the apparent leniency shown by Zelensky towards the implicated officials. Dismissals without subsequent legal actions mean these individuals might bask in their ill-gotten gains, free from repercussions. Perhaps the most puzzling piece of the puzzle is the seeming inactivity of the US and its allies, who are direct stakeholders in this scenario. Records suggest the US and NATO have funneled a colossal sum of over $80.5 billion to Ukraine. The mystery deepens when one questions why the tap hasn't been turned off amidst these allegations. Is it possible that the US and NATO see a silver lining in this tumultuous cloud? In the midst of political turmoil and dwindling domestic backing, Ukraine's challenges extend fiercely into the war zone. It's more than just the damage to the military hardware sent by the US and NATO that Ukraine grapples with. The nation is up against a shrinking pool of military personnel. The internet is abuzz with tales of Ukraine's questionable draft strategies. One video, shockingly, even captures an individual with disabilities being enlisted for frontline duty. Sending such unprepared souls to the warfront is a glaring testimony to Ukraine's waning defense mechanisms. Contrast this with Russia, who's flexing its military muscle with confidence. Reports from various quarters reveal Russia's successful defense against a Ukrainian offensive last June. That day wasn't a good one for Ukraine and its allies. They were hit hard, losing 15 Leopard tanks and 20 Bradley combat vehicles to Russian forces. This Ukrainian setback can be chalked up to a slew of Russian advantages, 
a commanding presence in electronic warfare, a savvy deployment of kamikaze drones, and a knack for launching potent counter-strikes. The word on the street is that after bearing the brunt of bombings by Ukraine and its allies, Russia's retaliating with cluster bombs. This suggests that Russia, for now, seems to be one step ahead of Ukraine, the US, and NATO in the strategy game. And amid this turmoil, Russia's even making a pretty penny, capitalizing on Europe's energy pinch. Viewing the larger picture, a staggering Ukraine leaning on the US and NATO, juxtaposed with a strident Russia, it appears the Russian incursion into Ukraine might not wrap up anytime soon. And in this chess match of power, it's clear Russia's got the current advantage. With the Russian invasion looking to drag on, it's becoming more of a marathon than a sprint. The balance might tip in Russia's favor if NATO allies, currently wrestling with an economic storm, cut their lifelines to Ukraine. And let's not discount Russia's play of using their special forces to take a shot at President Zelensky, sidestepping a full-blown confrontation. History shows these units have been ace cards for Putin. Another potential trump card? Flexing their nuclear muscles. But it's a card they'd likely play only if the West makes a bold, aggressive move first, like dropping cluster bombs. The paths to a Russian win are varied, and if they do come out on top, the global stage is in for a shakeup. Imagine the shift. Russia taking the reins in Ukraine, unlocking the vault to the nation's rich resources. Most Americans might not know that Ukraine ranks as the fifth largest wheat supplier globally, not to mention sitting atop the throne as the leading sunflower oil provider. Europe heavily relies on these goods. If Russia dictates the price tag, European nations would have little choice but to pay the piper. And on the energy front? Russia, already Europe's primary natural gas dealer, could ratchet up the prices post-victory. Looking at the land, Russia's footprint in the Black Sea would likely spread, especially after pocketing Crimea. With Ukraine under their belt, they'd commandeer sea paths connecting it. Meaning? Europe's lifelines for food and energy would be more entwined with Russia than ever before. These shifts spell out a stormy horizon for Europe. We can anticipate a chillier rapport between Russia and NATO. From this vantage point, it seems Russia's global clout is set for a boost post-conflict. The world map might just need some edits. But the story doesn't end there. If Russia's Ukraine gambit succeeds, where would they cast their eyes next? Buzz from Belarus suggests Poland could be in the crosshairs. With Russia's Wagner forces allegedly on standby, it rings alarm bells for NATO, given Poland's integral role in the alliance. There you have it, folks. Our breakdown of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the struggles, the scenarios, and what it could all mean in the bigger picture. I know this is a polarizing issue, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. What stood out to you most from this conflict? Were any of the developments surprising? And where do you see things headed next for the region? Leave a comment below sharing your perspective. Let's have a thoughtful discussion to better understand this complex situation. History is unfolding before our eyes, and your viewpoint matters. That wraps up this video update on the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Stay safe out there and take care of one another. Until next time.